Nazi theme was emphasized over and over again. Gemeinnutz geht vor Eigennutz, which means the common good is to be placed above an individual's requirements. Did all Germans believe in the Nazi theme? Growing up in Hamburg, Germany during the reign of the Nazis seemed ordinary at first. Even before Hitler took power, the Nazis had begun to establish their reign of terror. Near my home was a shoe store owned by Jews. After Hitler took power, the Nazis demolished their store in broad daylight. They dragged the owner of the store and his wife and kids into the street. They beat them and cursed while bystanders watched. I was standing in a group of people during a parade, and whenever the Nazi flag passed by, we were supposed to salute the flag with the arm raised in the Hitler salute. Nazi troopers passed through the crowd and would beat anyone who did not salute the flag. My neighbor, Mother Schulz, bent down and said to me as the Nazi flag passed by us, Rudy, do you see the color of that flag? I replied that it was red. She replied, No, it's the color of blood, and it is the blood that they will spill. Many citizens thought Hitler was Germany's savior, who would bring prosperity and help Germany take her rightful place in the sun. Many of our neighbors suddenly changed their affiliations toward the Nazis. The truth is, such people were either afraid to stand up for freedom, or they hoped for some economic gain by joining the Nazis. Some businesses were pressuring their workers to join the Nazi party or leave. The Nazi ideology was taught in the schools and universities. Teachers who didn't comply were suspended. Many of my neighbors were disappearing from their apartment buildings, and the Nazis made sure everyone could hear the commotion they created while arresting one of their residents. Two of the most common reasons for arrest were opposing the party program or supporting the Jews. My neighbor, Heinrich Vobs, who was an honest and simple man, was sent to a concentration camp for saying out loud what he thought about the Nazi statues. He returned six months later a broken man, a shadow of his former self. He told us he was not allowed to tell us about his treatment while in the camp, or he would be sent back for life. Eventually, he calmed his fears enough to tell us his sickening stories. He told of one story where everyone was forced to stand naked, or nearly so, outside in the middle of winter, ankle deep in snow, with his or her hands in shackles. The SS would pour water over them, which soon turned into ice and beat their frozen hands with a rubber hose or stick to warm them up. He died six weeks after returning home. My friends Karl Heinz and Helmut had intense negative feelings for the Nazis. The actions of the Nazi party and its faithful followers contradicted everything we felt to be noble and sacred. As we watched many neighbors and friends taken away and die, our anger grew into a quiet resolve to do something to resist the evil that now dominated our land. We began to expand our resistance movement by bringing in larger number of conspirators to help distribute the pamphlets telling the horrid truth about the Nazis and Hitler. We didn't realize, of course, how famous our activities would soon make us, but we didn't hold back. We thought the people deserved to know the hidden truth.